Hey everybody, Luxon to Swirl here. I am going to attempt another tray uh, with resin. Uh, instead of putting cute little Christmas penguins in it like I did last time, and I'll link to that video below if you want to see it, I am going to put Lois Lane from the 60s and 70s comic book covers, or representations of comic book covers, into this because I'm going to, I have my, I laid, I ha mm. so I have all my pictures here and I laid them out initially how I want them. And then I took all of these outside because these are printed on my inkjet printer. These are not actual covers of comic books. I don't have the money to buy those comics. They're very rare. And even the crappy copies are kind of expensive. And I don't want to ruin comic books. People love these things so much, and I don't want to destroy what copies there still are. So I have pictures. I printed them out. I needed to seal them so the inkjet printer ink wouldn't run. So that's why I laid them out first, and then I took them all outside and sprayed them with Rust-Oleum 2X Clear Spray. A couple layers, both front and back. Theoretically, according to what I've read on the internet, so it must be true, that will seal the ink in place like it does with a water slide, and then I can Mod Podge these into place in the tray, Mod Podge again over it, and then, hopefully, with any luck, pour a nice layer of resin to protect the whole thing. So that's what we're shooting for in this project. I'm going to start, I've cleaned this tray out. This was something I found at a flea market in pretty good shape. It looks nice. I'm not going to repaint it. I like how it looks already. And I'm going to cover the entire bottom anyway. And because I'm doing that, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to paint it white on the base like I did last time. But I am going to start by putting down a nice significant, if not, not really thick, but a serious layer <laughs> of Mod Podge. We'll just start by doing this. It dries clear, so I'm not worried about it. I'm not gonna feel... <laughs> if you go back and watch the other video, you'll know why I'm laughing. I had some problems in that one with the, uh, the ceiling and the ceiling of it and the painting of it and all sorts of things. So hopefully I learned something from that experience that will make this one a tiny bit easier. Uh, once the Mod Podge that I'm putting on right now dries, I will bring you back and we will place our um, cover photos one at a time where I hope to get them or place them based on my, my reference picture here. I was going to print this out, you know, just in black and white on a laser printer to have a reference piece of paper in front of me, but my printer keeps erroring, erroring out. Uh, I guess this is just too complicated and it doesn't want to deal with it. So I've got it on my iPad. All right, now we're going to let this dry and we will come back and resume. Stay tuned. Okay, our Mod Podge is almost dry couple of spots that aren't quite. I'm going to go ahead uh, and back to my reference iPad. I am going to work with the four corners first. So this is the moment of truth. We'll find out if um, I've sealed these well enough. I really don't know. Um, the video I found that was most helpful to me in deciding whether to do this or not and how to do it. I actually used uh, pictures cut out of graphic novels. So it was comic book pictures, but they were, they were from the printed book, like the comic book, except nowadays they're not comic books anymore. They're graphic novels now, but you know. So she wasn't destroying something from the 60s and 70s like like these pictures, she was doing a modern graphic novel, a comic book that she and her husband both enjoy reading. So she was making a tray for him. And uh, one of the things that she said that I thought was so interesting was that it's okay 
I mean, you should try and get these to lie flat. Um, but if you have any like wavies, like I'm, I'm getting wrinkles here because the paper is getting wet. If you have that, it's actually not the end of the world. Do the best you can to get it flat, but the resin will actually cover that up and make it look okay. And the reason that caught my eye, or caught, caught my attention was because uh, in the tumbler world, we are always having to be so careful when we put something like vinyl or paper onto a tumbler not to have any bubbles or wrinkles because that will show. It will be awful. You will see it. Everything has to be perfectly flat against the tumbler. So I'm hoping, I mean, she showed her finished tray and you couldn't see any of the, these wavy, uh, wet paper sorts of lines. Once the whole thing was done, it looked perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if she's right with my own test here. All right, I am going to stop here. I'm gonna let the whole thing dry and then we'll come back and I'll probably apply more Mod Podge, but we'll see how things look when it's dry. Hey folks, we're back. I am going to hopefully finish this tray today. I put some more layers of Mod Podge on. There are some spaces where things have lifted and now that they're Mod Podge, they're, I can't push them down, they're, they're stiff and, kind of set that way. 
Um, at this point, I'm, I'm feeling like I should just go ahead and put the epoxy on and see what happens. You know, if it's a total disaster, then that'll be the end of the project. If it is any sort of success, then yay, and uh, it will go off to my friend. <laughs> so either way, we'll, we'll get a video out of it, and I will know whether this method works for the future or this method definitely is not good. And by this method, I'm not talking about cutting actual pictures out of a printed comic book because I think that would work fine. The part that may not work is the fact that these were all printed by me on my inkjet printer onto regular old 20 pound copy paper because I read on the internet, so it must be true, that that works better than printing them on photo paper and then trying to seal that and Mod Podge that in place because that paper they say is too thick. You have better luck with regular copy paper. So I did all the, the steps. As you know, I've talked my way through this whole project, but you know, it still may not work. Let's face it, hit or miss. I've never done this exact thing before. So we'll find out. Stay tuned. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna gear up, pour the epoxy in. I am gonna add, I'm gonna add a small amount of twinkle, which is a holographic additive. I'm gonna add a small amount of Marabou Rainbow Alcohol Ink, which is a very, 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 very small sparkle additive. And I'm also gonna add a little Marabou Alcohol Ink in glitter, just, just because. So we'll have um, color shifting, so it'll be different kinds of sparkles as well. But not too much, because I'm not trying to cover it up. I'm just trying to, you know, maybe hide a couple of flaws. <laughs> So you'll see me add this, you'll see me mix it up, you'll see me pour it in. I will spritz at the end with 91% isopropyl alcohol. I will probably heat gun it first and then I will uh, hit it with the alcohol spray uh, and then we will come back and assess how it turned out. So sit back and enjoy the show. And we're back. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this thing in the daylight, presumably, hopefully finished and see how it looks. I wanted to mention, um, after I turned the camera off in the last segment, uh, I came back every 15, 20 minutes or so for the next hour because there continued to be bubbles coming up from underneath a couple specific spots. A couple of the places where I had Mod Podged everything, but there were still uh, lifted corners or lifted edges, there was, some, there was some air in there and it kept coming out and forming bubbles. So I would come back and pop the bubbles and hit it with heat again to smooth everything out. So I just wanted to, just wanted to let you know that, you know, you should, something like this, you should definitely babysit it for about an hour after you pour the resin in because things can continue to happen, obviously. And uh, so let's take the cover off and see what we got. Dun, 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 dun. Time for a close up. Alrighty, let's take a perusal here. Uh, actually, you know what? I, I have to say, on first glance, I think it looks fantastic. I, there is a little more sparkle in it than I intended, but I do think the sparkle covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> and you can still, you know, you can still read the words, you can still see who the characters are. So, not too much sparkle. Just a little bit more than I was expecting. I probably could have gone with any one of those three additives and not done all three, and it would have been fine. 
But overall, I have to say, let me turn this one off, that always causes glare. I have to say, I am really thrilled with how this looks. I hope my friend is, we'll see. <laughs> It is the week of Christmas. I am not gonna try and get this to her as a Christmas present. It will be a Happy New Year's present, maybe. I am impressed with how well the Mod Podge, or not, sorry, how well the resin covers up the Mod Podge strokes. And I mean, right here was, oh, oh, look. There's a, where's my finger? There's a bubble. Ooh. So even after I popped all the ones that, that came up here, Another one formed and stayed suspended down there. Oh, well, I'm not gonna do anything about it. <laughs> but in general, I do think the resin covers up a whole bunch of nasty stuff that the Mod Podge accentuated. And it hides all that. I'm really impressed. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Stay safe, everyone. I will see you in the next video.